Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description or click the join button below for more details. My name is Sava, and today we're investigating a crucial and very practically relevant technique for risk-adjusted performance measurement, that is, the Omega Ratio. The Omega Ratio is quite a recently developed tool for portfolio performance evaluation, proposed first by Keaton and Chadwick in 2002, as recent as that. And while the formula for the Omega Ratio might seem overly mathematically complicated, it is indeed quite intuitive to understand. And perhaps most importantly, there is a further development in the area, a further simplification that can allow you to optimize, not only calculate, but even optimize the Omega Ratio quite easily in Excel. So let's build a portfolio of five stocks, as we usually do, of five well-known US companies, Tesla, Apple, Microsoft, Walmart, and Caterpillar. So a mixture of uh, hype uh, growth stocks and some more established value stocks. And let's optimize a portfolio of those five using the Omega Ratio. The essence of the Omega Ratio is to first establish some return target and then study the historical empirical distribution of portfolio returns to figure out your upside and downside and compare them together. So in the numerator of the Omega Ratio over here, we would have a measure of portfolio upside. You integrate the cumulative distribution function of your portfolio returns from your return target tau all the way to positive infinity. And the one minus the cumulative distribution function here simply uh, makes it a level playing field with the denominator, where you have got the downside of your portfolio empirical distribution function for historical returns. And there you integrate it from negative infinity up to tau, the portfolio return target. And quite naturally, the omega ratio would return you more conservative portfolios for lower return targets and more um, risky and more ambitious portfolios, more concentrated portfolios for higher return targets. And we will be able to see it for ourselves in an application further on today. However, what have been developed later on by Capsus et al. in 2014, so quite recently still, is that the omega ratio is equivalent to this particular function that does not contain integrals over empirical distribution functions, that could be a problem as you might have imagined, that simply contains expectations of returns or underperformances. Those underperformances are just differences between the target, tau, and your return daily. And here you've got a positive expectation, meaning that you're only averaging over the downside, shall we say, only over the underperformances below the target. And this is what makes the omega ratio in this particular parameterization very similar to the Sotina ratio that we have discussed in one of our previous tutorials. But without further ado, let's first calculate daily returns for our stock data. First of all, dividing the price today by the price yesterday and subtracting one, and doing it for all five stocks and bottom line clicking it for all 10 sample years. We have indeed got 10 years worth of data constituting 2,516 return observations that we need to keep in mind when we'll calculate daily averages. And now we can calculate our um, average daily returns for individual stocks. And that is quite easy to do. We can just use the product one plus function. Calculating the overall cumulative returns, averaging them all in one over 2,516, as we have got 2,516 return observations and subtracting one. That would give us a daily return for Tesla. And we can drag it across and get individual daily returns for all of our five portfolio stocks. Now let's establish our target return. So let's start quite ambitious. Let's say we want a target annual return of 10%. So we don't want to get anything below that, but we are happy with getting uh, something in excess of that, which is a very common and 
quite typical, quite intuitive investor objective. And that's and also one of the reasons why Omega Ratio is so popular with practitioners. Now let's start with some initial weight allocation. And again, as usual, the most natural allocation to start with is equal weights, 20% in each of our five stocks. And we'll also need, as usual, with all uh, weighting allocation optimization tools to um, keep track of the sum of our portfolio weights to make sure they do not exceed 100%. So we do not uh, make money out of thin air. Now we can finally calculate the average daily return of such a portfolio using a simple sum product function, applying it to an array of average daily stock returns and stock weights. Then we can uh, bring our annual target to a daily frequency, which is easy to do. One plus the annual target return over there, our tau, to the power of one over 252 minus one. And that would allow us to calculate the numerator of the capsules at all, parameterization of the omega ratio, which is our expected daily return minus the daily target. So expected return minus tau in the numerator. Now we need to calculate the uh, expected downside or expected underperformance below the target in the denominator of the capsules at all formula for the omega ratio. For that, we need to simulate our portfolio daily, some product of the weights, and here we need to lock the rows for weights, obviously, as we don't want them to change across our 10 year period, and then enforce this formula with individual stock daily returns throughout the whole sample period, obviously. And now for the downside, we can simply apply the max function and then check for a very uh, simple condition. Uh, well, we need to return the maximum of either our underperformance, so daily target minus the portfolio return on this particular day, and zero otherwise. Here you see the analogy with the Sartina ratio, isn't it? You only take into account downsides. So for example, in this particular day, as Tesla performed very well, bringing our portfolio return up uh, in excess of 1%, it's obviously above our daily target, so we've got no downside on this day. However, in the second day, we have underperformed our daily target by approximately 27 basis points, which is reported in this particular cell, and so on. And now, just as with other downside risk adjusted measures, we calculate our average downside, calculating the average of this whole column, giving us 0.45%. And now finally, we can calculate the omega ratio as per the capsule et al formula over here, uh, by dividing our outperformance by the downside and adding up one. And that gives us an omega ratio of 1.1233. Can we do better than that? Well, to figure this out, we have to use numerical optimization with Excel Solver. So we go data solver and specify our optimization task. First of all, we want to maximize our omega ratio. So our omega ratio in cell P13 needs to be maximized by changing the weights. So cells P7 to T7. Now we need to impose our constraints. The first very natural constraint is that the sum of our weights should be equal to one. We're not keeping any of our money as cash and we're not taking on leverage. Then we need to add a restriction that our outperformance needs to be non-negative. As well, we are interested in outperforming the target at least on average. And that's the only two constraints we need for the omega ratio optimization. We can leave this box ticked as we don't want to short sell any of the stocks. So we need the un unconstrained variables, which are our stocks, to stay non-negative. And we can stick with gradient descent, as our optimization problem over here is quite simple. And now we can click solve and wait until the algorithm converges to the optimal solution. Now we can click OK and see that for the annual target return of 10%, which is a pretty ambitious target, we are allocating our capital quite evenly between the three um, hyped up growth stocks, which are Tesla, Apple, and Microsoft. Um, approximately a third of our capital goes into each of the three with a little bit overexposure to Apple, which is very understandable and very natural to assume. Now, if we reduce our target return to 5%, then we can 
click solve once again and reallocate our funds. And in this particular case, we would have a much lower exposure to Tesla and some non-negligible exposure to Walmart. So as you bring your target return down, you have got a more conservative and more diversified and a more reasonable portfolio overall. And if we reduce our target return to zero, then this is a particular case of the omega ratio uh, called the gain loss ratio. And we can solve and verify that this portfolio would indeed be even more conservative with Walmart constituting now uh, almost 30% of our capital, more than any of those three trendy growth stocks. However, we still are not investing anything in Caterpillar. Why is that? Well, this is because the historical performance of Caterpillar was um, quite disappointing, whereas the risk of Caterpillar was comparable to the risk of more uh, well-performing companies such as those four which would imply that omega ratio, when you use this particular procedure, does necessarily rely upon historical returns and historical return distributions. So always, as with uh, any measure that relies upon this, take it with a pinch of salt. However, still, the omega ratio can be a very fruitful integration into your portfolio performance evaluation framework, and do consider applying it when you are seeking um, a well-diversified portfolio at a particular target return. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, finance, or economics you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.